Fifteen years ago, when I started in the fashion industry, this is what a hand sketch design looked like. Basic, right? Today, thanks to 3D design tools, this is what it can look like: an unlimited design in every workable aspect possible. Design as we know it is going through a revolution thanks to data and technology. I remember in 2010 sitting with my shirt designer Gemma, with a cup of tea in hand, knowing what was ahead of us. We needed to list everything the factory needs to know in order to produce those shirts. Every shirt design needed a button and stitch colour. What fabric composition was the material? Painstakingly going item by item to make sure that all the tiny elements of that garment were correctly listed for the factory. We sat there for 12 hours, picking every colour that matched every fabric per garment. Painful was not the word. But more importantly, the amount of time we lost was immense, and the designers have to do this every season for each new line. Today, this is completely different. Designers can work with visualized 3D garments, fully functional, with fabric, trim, and prints per size scale, and you can even upload your own fabric choices to see the flow and drape of the design, all before a garment is made, and see it all in real time. And this is just the beginning. Data and technology are driving a new role for the designer. Most designers I know say we are losing the art, almost becoming paint by numbers, and in essence, just slaves to data. But I disagree. I believe that data will free the designer from mundane working and will unleash amazing power of creativity to the designer and the customer. So, how will data change the role of the designer? And how will it allow for more freedom and creativity, both to the designer and to each of us? I'll give you a few examples. Data and technology now allow dialogue with the consumer. An average shopper spends up to eight minutes every time they use a fitting room. So I reckon I've lost probably five years of my life in them. <laughs> We've all been there, right? Those tiny rooms, hot and uncomfortable, and inevitably the clothes never fit on that tiny hook. And when you want to try in another size. The pain of getting dressed, hunting the new size, coming back and doing it all over again. Today we have from London to Shanghai interactive changing rooms. Interactive changing rooms have mirrors that are essentially giant touchscreens. The mirrors recognise your garments from their tags and let you know, hey, that shirt you're trying on, we have it in these five colours and in these sizes. And if you want to try it on another size, the mirror sends an instant message to the salesperson, and voila, the shirt that you want comes to you. It can even show you the right shoes and belts to wear, and it even lets you know what it looks like in the mirror. This completely transforms the whole experience for the consumer, but also it allows the designer to understand us better. Every time we try on a garment, the mirror recognizes us even more by our data. And then the next time, the experience is even more personalised. So we now move on to the eye reactions at fashion shows. Researchers right now have the technology to look at eye reactions at fashion shows. Just imagine you're sitting in the front row of a fashion show. Your eye reaction could influence the next designer's design. We already know at the end of fashion shows, people would applause, and now you can hear a pin drop. Everyone is already on their mobile phones, sending pictures to Instagram and to fashion bloggers to generate the next hype. Burberry and others already last year introduced "See Now, Buy Now." What you see on that garment and that catwalk is instantly available in store and to buy online. Large companies are already seeing this trend and are joining it. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos recently stated that fashion is one of the two main elements Amazon will work on. The other is food. Amazon recently bought Body Labs, which is a startup which can generate an accurate 3D body design. So very soon, Amazon and others can generate a custom-made garment. We all know that our body shape is unique. So today, with technology, we can design for your uniqueness, and it doesn't stop there. They've also developed an algorithm that can learn your personal style. So very soon, picking a new item of clothing could go like this: just. Upload your full-body photo. Let the algorithm learn your style, 
and it will look at your social media feed and your online photos. The next thing I see driving this revolution is how the next collection is chosen. I remember when trend agencies would come to the office to run through predictions. This cost around fifty thousand dollars a year, by the way. You'd see them gliding through the office, covered in every trend. You made sure you looked good that day. <laughs> They'd highlight pages and pages of images. We held on to every word they said. But these trends are just that: predictions, educated guesses. The co-founder of WGSN even said, "Mark Worth, no one can really predict trends. Many forecasters give self-fulfilling accuracy rates with." Accuracy percentages they claim up to 80 percent. We now know so much about what the designer wants. In 2016, an Australian couture designer, Jason Grecht, partnered with IBM for Melbourne Fashion Week. They gathered images in social media bus, capturing 10 years worth of fashion runway images, and IBM's Watson predicted the trends. So, for example, it predicted the rise in pastels. Now, Jason Grecht, the designer, said. I would have never have thought about pastels for my collection, but this cognitive couture, as it was called, allowed for a whole new palette of colours and allowed the designer to be more creative. Now, what's nice about this is that not only is it much more accurate, but it's much faster. Designers sometimes work with trends months in advance, so they need to make educated guesses about what we would like not now, not next week, but next season. IBM was able to analyse all of the 10 years' worth of data in only four days. As Mark Jacobs says, the customer is the final filter. What survives this whole process is what people wear. I am not interested in making clothes that end up in some dusty museum. So, the dialogue with the consumer and the use of data and technology is driving a role for the designer. But the key question is, what is this role? I believe that with data and technology, the role of the designer is both of a creator and a curator. The designer is free to design, not document, create rather than update. We now know that with technology and big data, we can save the designers time, but also we can get them to design what we want to wear, which will transform this 2.4 trillion dollar industry. I see the future fashion designer as an innovator and a visionary. Where the consumer can interact with real-time feedback before anything is made, the designer can design, document, and create within minutes any pattern, style, or size. They can then 3D model it and eventually 3D print it. This privilege that once required money and access, your own unique design is now within reach. A designer at Nike who is already involved in this way of working said, "In the last one hour." I've done 15 images compared to one. You simply cannot compare it to the old ways of working, and this is not just about the designer. Data and technology can empower us as consumers. We can take an active part in designing what we want to wear, and for many of us, it's beyond clothes. It's how we present ourselves to the world, and it's not just in the fashion industry. Many other creative fields can use data and technology to enhance freedom and creativity, from architecture to TV production to art and more. To me, it's about embracing the changes, seeing the opportunities and advantages together with the limitations. We should embrace this. The designer becomes a collaborator. The designer, the consumer, and the brand—a 24/7 virtual link of fashion. Ten years ago, I was in New York on a fashion research trip. I'd spend days looking at the competition, what fabrics, colours, trends sold, putting inspiration balls together to present to design. Soon enough, this data will be live with the designer. There is such a strong focus on shorter calendars and speed to markets, so immediate consumer insights will support this speed. But don't get me wrong; we all love a trip to New York to confirm the numbers. <laughs> I always have this memory as a fashion graduate. In a meeting, management asked the designer, "What percentage split is your collection between fashion and basics?" He sat there with his cat in his lap and said, "Honey, I'm a designer. I don't work with numbers." <laughs> well, guess what? We all do now, and I believe it's game-changing. Thank you.